we're building coal. Got this thing. Thank you to Billy Wild. Thank you to Billy Wild from Wild Quads. Provided the core frame and all these parts here. And do a quick build. Have a bit of fun. Uh, my second core. And so I'm gonna give it a go. Yeah, it does smell like shoes. It smells like a new shoe box. I think it's the foam. Alright, there it is. FERC Coal. I apologize if you can hear the fan in the background. It is very hot right now in Brisbane. Alright, there it is, all its glory. Shiny. Take it up. There it is. So you got the frame. It's very, very stiff actually. It's amazing how stiff it is. Budge strap, pretty cool. And these little bits. This one is for the camera, bra camera mount bracket, and it's actually quite interesting. I'll show you later. Leave that in there, because I'm probably going to use that. Alright, so I'm going to put this to the side. And. Alright. Off. Here's that hard shell I'm talking about. It's pretty cool. Alright, there's the camera mount. That's injected plastic. Already comes with, that's what I like. Already comes with a few standoffs and it is isolated from the frame. So there actually is a little washer there that's actually non conductive and it doesn't kick to the frame. So that's good. Uh, even though there's bolts touching, I'm not sure if that'll be a issue or not, but it shouldn't be. Alright, cool. So the best way to build this is if we start out building everything on the outside first and then putting everything in. So what I'm going to do is take this bottom plate off actually. Don't lose that washer. So I need a box, that's what I need. I need a box. There's a box. Actually also helps to support this area. Makes it a bit stiffer. Alright, put that to the side. Don't need that. So what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna solder up the flight control and then make a little pot out of that and put it in. Let's see how it goes. Alright, so the flight control I chose to use for this one is the DTFC. This flight controller is a PDB and flight controller built into one. What I like about this one as well is that it's a completely flat base. So you can mount it directly to the base of the frame or you can put something underneath and there won't be anything obstructing it. 
The ESCs I'm using in this build is the Armatan 30 amp 2 to 6 S Beal Halley S uh, ESCs. These have been pretty good, pretty reliable, works well on Loki Shot. Haven't tried D Shot yet, but I'm sure that's possible. Okay, so the way I'm going to do this, I'm going to do everything outside the frame first. I'm going to desolder these wires from the speedies, solder them onto here first, and then when I've got everything built up, stick the wires out that little hole in there, and solder it to the ESCs instead of solding the ESCs to the fire truck. Alright, so I guess I can start with desoldering all of these ESCs. So over here, that's where your battery leads go, and your ESC solder up there. So that's what I'm going to do, and tin all those first. Alright, just going to let that cool for a bit. And then what we're going to do is we're going to solder on wires for the ESCs. Now make sure they are long enough to fit inside the frame and I'm going to solder on a XT60. The XT60 on the uh, core frame just put, goes through here, there's a bunch of holes cut out on the bottoms and that's where you can put the XT60 through and then solder it to your flight control. You cut out about this length of, what's this? 18 gauge wire. Yeah, some of that. 18 gauge silicon wire. Cut out a few lengths of these. Uh, solder them on. Then you can just trim them off to whatever length you need. But um, I don't have any extra wires, so I'm just using the wires of the ESCs. But luckily, all of them work. So, take that back out. I am going to solder this on. Two wires on each negative pad and one on each. So once I've turned the flight controller, I'm now going to turn the um, power wires. Really wish I had some blue tech right now, but. Talk about hot. There we go. Not the best soldering I've done, but it's held on there good. So I've got my negative wires soldered on, positive wires soldered on, and that'll fit in quite nicely. Okay, so what I've done with this video transmitter is I've actually put it on the bottom so that I can still access the button to change the frequencies through the bottom of the, of the frame. Um, I'll have taller standoffs to mount the flight controller. This is a DTFC, so it needs to be self mounted. Um, but what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you the camera mount, which is actually probably the most, one of the most interesting things about this frame. So, what it comes with is these two little plastic pieces. And what you do to get it working is you, it's actually molded to the HS cam. So, that actually 
just clips in place like that. Same thing on the other side with the other one. There we go. Oops. Make sure you get the sides correct. So you have these little two notches, they should be facing outwards. Same thing on the other side. Okay. Now somehow you have to fit it into this bracket here. Okay, so what you are going to need, which they don't include unfortunately, is these M2 bolts. These just these also thread into the plastic uh, housing of the HS cam. Uh, because the standard bolts that come with the HS is not long enough to actually work in this mount. So once you've threaded in first, get some threads in the plastic. Take them out. Put them through here and then put on the plastic piece. And then once you've done that, try to line up the camera. Okay, I didn't manage to get that on camera, but it was a bit tricky. What you have to do is place little side circles things, that's what I'm going to call it side circles on the side of the HS first hold them together and put them into the bracket and just slightly stretch out the bracket just enough to push it in don't try not to be careful not to break it but yeah that worked there you go so it's got the ratcheting sort of movement here which is actually really cool now what I'm doing is I'm soldering I've made a little VTX harness so I've got the plug for the TBS Unify, got the plug for the HS 1177 and now what I'm doing is I'm powering it both by 5 volts and you've got the video signal going through between the two and powering, powering, powering them both off of 5 volts. So let's see how it goes. So there we go, I've got the 5 volts powered, powering the camera and the VTX and I've got the video wire going in between and that's pretty much how it's going to go inside the frame. So that's VTX done. Now I'm going to move on to our receiver. Now I've got the receiver all soldered up. I've got my UART uh, for the SBUS and I've got it connected to the SBUS port for the receiver. Sorry, for the smart port is the UART. And that's all wired up. The VTX is wired, wired up. I've got the power wires for my ESCs. Now I need to do the signal wires for the ESCs. Okay, so it's now the next day. I've come back to it. Had a bit of a break. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to... Well, let's see where I'm at. So currently I've put the VTX at the bottom of the core frame. I've prepared my ESCs, it's all tinned and everything. And I have prepared the flight controller by soldering on the wires, the, um, the receiver and the VTX on. So what I'm going to move on to now is the motors. And I've also done the camera mount. So now I'm going to do the motors, I'm going to tin all of them. And I'm going to solder on the motor wires. Because these ones don't have motor wires already on them. They have shoulder pads. So that's what I'm going to do now. So I've now soldered all the wires onto the motors. What I'm going to do next is I'm going to tin the signal and negative pads on the ESC. So I can solder on the signal wires like this. So now what I've done is 
I finished soldering up all the ESCs, the wires are brought through from the ETFC. I've actually managed to fit the X4R without any pins in the front here, just switched right next to the flight controller. That's allowed me to actually use all the degrees of camera tilt, and that worked quite well. Um, added a bit of hot glue to the plug for the camera just to relieve some strain. So, what I'm doing now is I've actually added a FTDI plug. And what I've done is you get these little DuPont connectors, or you can use servo plugs, which is the same thing, pretty much. Um, got those, soldered it up to the TX and RX of UART 1 on the flight controller and the positive and negative on the 5 volt rail. And that's allowing me to plug in like this. And what I've done is I've just super glued it, all those plugs together so you make one big plug. And I, what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually glue it right there so that when I need to change a setting in the flight controller, all I have to do is plug in what is really just one plug, like that. And then I can connect to the flight controller really easy. Don't need to use the USB port. So I'm going to do that. And then after that, I'm going to work on the motors. So I've got all my bolts here that, I'm, that I need. These are M3 button heads. So I'm going to get these motors. I'm going to put it on an arm. I'm going to put the wires through these holes on the core put them through and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to bolt that on and then solder the ESC wires on alright straightforward so one thing to note uh, it's a good idea to use some screw lock or some thread lock anything like this I'm just using some of this stuff um, get the temporary stuff. This is supposed to be permanent, but it's not really. So I'll use it anyway. Um, especially if you're running less than four bolts. So I'm running three bolts on each motor. 